Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Grey Knights as we get into the Grey Knights Chaplain, a member of most Space Marine chapters whose purpose it is to um, restore faith. Uh, what's interesting about the Grey Knights is that the Grey Knights um, have never been corrupted. So what is it about a Grey Knights Chaplain that makes them so special? We're going to talk about that today. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day, and if you have any suggestions, just comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Grey Knights Chaplain. Grey Knights Chaplains act in a similar role to those of the other chapters, by serving as the spiritual leaders of their fellow battle brothers. However, the challenges facing a chaplain of the Grey Knights are very unique. The rigors of serving in the Grey Knights can be sometimes daunting, for the life of a Grey Knight is one of sacrifice and duty as they face the worst horrors of the warp. They will never know peace or respite, for their war is an eternal one, fighting against the vile demons of chaos. Over the many centuries of facing such malefic creatures, a battle brother will lose many comrades should he survive the countless trials and struggles against his demonic foes. Even the Grey Knights can have their faith tested, overcome by the nearly overwhelming sadness and impotent rage as he loses close comrades and commanders. Space Marines are extraordinary men, Space Marine Chaplains even more so, and a Chaplain of the Grey Knights is a rare specimen indeed, and the chapter has precious few. A Grey Knight's Chaplain must minister to the spiritual needs of soldiers destined to fight the most horrible foes. The men of their flock constantly look at the warp and hear the whispers of demons, and yet thanks to the Grey Knight Chaplain and those who have preceded him, not one Grey Knight has ever been corrupted by the Ark Enemy. But sometimes there is doubt, especially in regards to the seemingly futile of the Inquisition's endless struggle against chaos and the corruptible nature of mankind that allows the arch enemy eternal purchase on the human soul. A Grey Knight never doubts the righteousness of his cause, for fighting a demon is not a gesture of futility. They believe it to be a true and righteous purpose, for they have seen the result of the demon's depravity. But the fight is only half the battle. For the demon is one manifestation of the archenemy, and its violence is but one weapon of the warp. The Inquisition battles the plans of chaos, just as the Grey Knights battle its soldiers. But sometimes, even the Inquisitors can fall to the will of the ruinous powers. Over the millennia, many Inquisitors have been lost to the temptations of chaos, though a Grey Knight knows he should never speak of such a thing. Sometimes, there are renegades who hide themselves amongst the Ordos. No one ever knows how many heretics are wearing the Inquisitorial Rosette. There could possibly even be some within the Ordo Malleus that direct the Grey Knights. A Grey Knight battle brother knows it is not his place and leaves the thinking about such matters to the Inquisition. But how could they trust them if they delve so deeply into the corruption of chaos? Sometimes battle brothers question if the battle against the corruption of chaos could ever be won. A Grey Knight's chaplain is always there to ensure their troubled battle brothers and ensure that any doubt is stomped out. For during their centuries of service, they have led the Grey Knights through every trial of the mind that chaos could ever inflict upon them. The arch enemy's atrocities know no bounds, and only men like the Grey Knights could ever stop the insidious crimes of chaos. In a Battle Brothers moment of doubt, all they have to do is reflect on the fact that the Emperor continuously sends the Grey Knights to the bloodiest battlefields of the Imperium. This is no mere coincidence. By throwing themselves into those battles and butchering the demons, they would see the forces of chaos broken and fleeing. A battle brother has to take these victories and immerse themselves in them, letting victory bloat out everything else. By glorifying in it, all doubt would vanish. The enemy made a grave mistake in bringing the fight to them, for the Grey Knights would drive all foes of mankind before them. All Grey Knights use Psychers, while most Space Marine chapters made use of such Psychers in the Librarium. Only the Grey Knights require psychic potential from all their recruits. This is what makes the Grey Knights capable of fighting the demons, for demons' most potent weapons threaten the soul itself. Demons bring with them mortal corruption, and fighting them exposes a Grey Knight to this corruption, and thus they are trained to resist it, taught prayers of willpower so potent can drive some recruits mad. The Grey Knight's power armor is filled with sigils against the powers of the warp. 
the same arcane symbols of protection tattooed on their skins so that their bodies are shielded against corruption. A neophyte is taught in the very early stages of his training to imprison his soul in a cage of faith and contempt for chaos, where no demons could reach it. It is the only weapon a demon truly fears, an incorruptible mind. The mere existence of the Grey Knights is a victory of sorts against chaos. Grey Knights are constantly exposed to the horrible truths about the true threat of the demon lurking just beyond the circle of the Emperor's light. They witness sights that would shake the faith of an ordinary space marine to their very foundation. A Grey Knight's chaplain must always stand ready to renew a Battle Brother's devotion when it falters, to remind him of his duty and his vows when hope seems lost. Their stern demeanor and critical eye watches over every action of the Battle Brothers, from his initiation to the last breath in his service to the Emperor, ever alert of signs of slacking zeal or any wavering in belief. Above all, Grey Knight chaplains remind their fellow Battle Brothers to honor and keep their faith with the Emperor. Young neophytes must also be monitored and indoctrinated as they progress towards becoming a full Battle Brother. Grey Knight chaplains are treated with awed respect by their Battle Brothers, and like many chapters, it falls to them to choose which aspirant will undertake training to become an Astarte. During the trials of new aspirants, the chaplains are the ones who incorporate the culture and values of the chapter into them as well as weeding out the spiritual weak and faithless individuals they find unworthy to become Grey Knights. The development and guidance of such superhuman warriors is only entrusted to the wisest and fiercest members of the chapter, mighty heroes who have demonstrated their own enduring devotion and uncompromising zeal on countless occasions. Chaplains are renowned for their sense of duty and responsibility to their battle brothers, knowing that only through unshakable faith can a space brain stand firm against the darkness rampant across the galaxy and in every human heart? One of the most notable Grey Knight chaplains was Chaplain Duridin, a veteran Grey Knight that always wore an enormous suit of Terminator armor when seeing to the chapter's spiritual health. One arm was painted a glossy black to signify his office as chaplain, and the rest was the traditional gunmetal gray of the Grey Knights. Durindin wore the same pair of ornate lightning claws had been passed down from chaplain to chaplain since the chapter's earliest days. Aside from his Crozius Arcanum, Chaplain Duridin always carried the Libra Demonica, an enduring symbol of the Grey Knight's devotion to his mission, and contained the cardinal tenets of lore gathered from the dark knowledge caged within the Segmentum Sanctorum's walls. Every Grey Knight carried a copy of the Libra Demonica in a ceramite case on his breastplate, but Durandin carried it in hand. These gnarled tomes contain the chapter's rites of battle and detail the traditional duties of every Grey Knight's rank. The books themselves are also potent psychic talismans in their own right, with pages illuminated in silver and bound to a spine carved from the high bone of a martyred Imperial Saint. And those were 40 facts on the Grey Knight Chaplain. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This lore is kind of, um, it kind of repeats itself. Uh, really, they're just trying to drive in the message that Grey Knights are just incorruptible already. They're they're better than space marines. So um, what's better than a, a gray knight? A gray knight chaplain. Um, it, it is it is the gray knight chaplain who makes sure to pick the correct um, recruits, um, and it is their initial uh, probing of the mind and the soul of a, of a recruit that um, is the reason why gray knights are so uncorruptible. Um, you're basically getting the best of the best in terms of choosing. Um, basically, they're really good coaches. Uh, and when they're actually out in the battlefield, um, of course, they they administer all of their faith and they inspire others. But they kind of already did their job by uh, choosing someone who wouldn't be corruptible, um, if that makes sense. It's kind of like um, it, it, that the chaplain already knows that this individual is going to be great or is destined for greatness. Uh, it's just a matter of like choosing him. And then after that, everything falls into place in a way. Uh, but again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any suggestions, comment down below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh One with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>
Oh, it is the foot my freedom. 